वेलकम टू सत्रिशीज एस्ट्रोलॉजी यूट्यूब चैनल माय नेम इज विधान पांड्या एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट माय एस्ट्रोलॉजिकल एनालिसिस फॉर आईसीसी वर्ल्ड कप 2019 क्रिकेट वी नो इज कंसीडर्ड एज ऑलमोस्ट लाइक अ रिलीजन इन इंडिया इट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ऑफ ऑल स्पोर्ट्स दैट आर प्लेड इन इंडिया एंड टू टॉप ऑफ टू टॉप इट ऑल आईसीसी क्रिकेट वर्ल्ड कप इज बीन treated as like a craze in india and in other countries in the world so in this video i'm going to cover uh, my astrological analysis of icc world cup 2019 i'm going to give my analysis of what can be seen in this tournament what is likely to happen how the tournament is going to end and uh, the outcome of various matches i mean how how we can see some of the outcomes of different matches with with that uh, i'll share my screen about the chart of how how do we calculate the chart of this tournament right so um, we know that first match of this tournament was played on 30th of may 2019 and the first bowl was bowled at around 10:30 local time which is british standard time so if we cast a chart of that time because when the first bowl was bowled the the tournament has actually started with that logic i have casted this chart and this chart i believe should be able to tell us what's going to be the story of this entire tournament so what we have to and the way how we have to analyze this chart i mean this chart basically should tell you about what happens during the tournament what happens before the tournament and what will happen after the tournament it should tell you everything about the tournament before after and the current situation so let's just start with little analysis of the chart so in this in the in the chart of the tournament uh, what we see is cancer a watery sign is rising we know that lord of cancer moon has gone into the pisces sign again a watery sign and moon is is as moon is aspected by venus uh, moon is aspected by jupiter which is again lord of ninth house so again watery sign the lord of watery sign is aspecting moon so again lot of water water and then we also know that venus is also considered as a watery planet so we know that the cancer sign is scorpio sign and pisces sign are considered as watery sign and we see that there is a connection of the moon the lord of ascendant has also gone into a, another watery sign so again there is a lot of water and that's why you see lot of rains and in terms of other signs other watery signs so there are uh, other uh, other masters of astrology has also considered capricorn and aquarius also as watery sign but in terms of planets two planets are considered to be watery planets which are moon primarily and venus now here what we see in this chart is venus is in is in the 10th house 10th house is also known as your horizon Tenth house is also known as the mid heaven. Mid heaven is what is there right there on the top, on your head. What is there in the sky? So that is seen from the tenth house, and that is seen from the the planets in tenth house. So what we see in this chart is Venus, a watery planet, has gone into the sky. So what it indicates is rain. because venus is a watery planet and it is it has gone on the sky so it will cause rain nothing but the rain so that what we see here also another point that has to be noted is venus is venus is a bad bad chart for this particular venus is a bad planet for this particular chart you know for movable signs 11th lord is bad cancer is a movable sign and 11th house 11 sign from cancer is taurus and the lord of taurus is venus venus is a badak planet for cancer sign and uh, it is in the 10th house so it's going to create some badak means troubles 
and it's going to create troubles and the way it's going to create trouble is through range so and then uh, venus again indicates a lot of things but uh, one of the things that venus indicates is water rain and these kind of things um, but uh, again since venus is a benefic planet uh, it's a natural benefic planet here uh, the mag uh, the beneficence of venus has kind of uh, subsided a bit because since it is a lot of uh, another kendra house is it is lord of fourth house so it will not be considered as a pure benefic planet uh, and that's as per the rules of lagu parashari so so what we see here is in this overall chart what we see is the lagna lord or ascendant lord has gone into ninth house aspected by ninth lord that makes the overall chart very powerful it has the potential to overcome lot of difficulties lot of challenges because it has an inherent is strength and the strength is because of the the mind the strength is because of the guidance is strength is because of the the blessings of the guru nine thousand is also house of blessings right and and there is a strong blessing and that is what will save this particular tournament so even though rain is going to interrupt but overall uh, there is a lot of production there is a lot of uh, uh, security cover around it so there are ways through which the tournament can sustain to a large extent uh, one of the rules which says is if you have to judge the stability of any tournament or if you have to judge the stability of anything uh, especially some some things like the sports contest or governments and uh, uh, things of that nature so they say that ascendant ascendant and the navmanch ascendant are to be considered for the stability so the if we see the navmanch so in the navmanch we have aquarius rising again a watery sign with moon in it and there is a mars also in it so moon and mars together uh, and the lord of ascendant of navmanch has gone into 10th house and there is a exchange of mars and saturn so exchange has its own meanings but in in one way if we see that uh, since there is a if there is a relation of first and 10th houses and their lords that makes the navmanch chart also relatively strong though there are other planets other combination also but if you see eight planets out of nine are in the four houses in the tri in the uh, quadrant houses so that's a very fortunate that's a very interesting combination that basically uplift the chart so it it gives a lot of strength to the chart but that's what we see so in terms of stability i think there is a lot of stability but in terms of longevity the rule says is you have to see the sub lord of ascendant if you have to judge the stability of something you have to look for the sublord sublord is sublord theory is uh, it, it comes from kp astrology and sublord of ascendant is mars so mars has gone into 12th house again this is not a very positive sign in terms of the stable the longevity for longevity of something uh, for sports tournament or in terms of government or in terms of Uh, some short term events if you have to see the longevity 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 is to be seen from the sub lord so here sub lord is mars since mars is in the 12th house it is with rahu again a planet of surprises full of surprises mars is in the house of losses it is the house of troubles secret enemies so so there can be some trouble because of uh, secret enemies or mars is also fire uh, so and rahu again uh, uh, not so not so good uh, again it's a natural malefic planet and with mars rahu and mars together is not a good combination to have in chart but they say if rahu is there with mars in 12th house mars typically will control rahu and it will not allow rahu to spoil play spoil sport so mars has lot of uh, dominance over rahu in 12th house
so hopefully the rahu will not trouble rahu in 12th house will not trouble so much mars in 12th house may make uh, things go out of way uh, mars is aggression and 12th house is aggression used in a wrong way so that's what we will see in in this tournament but overall if you see there is a lot of strength in the chart because first house ninth house fourth uh, fifth house all of them are powerful uh, jupiter is also aspected by sun so there is a lot of government involvement government support is there for this tournament and uh, mercury the third lot lot of effort the third lot of uh, subconscious mind and it is mercury is also natural karka of skill so all uh, it is there in the 11th house so all this is promising a lot of success a uh, lot of uh, achievements in this entire tournament so again this is this will be like one of the most unforgettable unforgettable tournaments so i think people will remember this tournament for a long period of time is what we can see from this chart again there is a lot of influence of uh, again we know rahu is a foreign planet 10th lord mars has gone into 12th house 12th house again it's a foreign house and uh, it is sitting with a foreign planet so again lot of involvement of foreign elements here in this chart in the action in in whatever in whatever is happening in this tournament there is a lot of foreign influence so that's what it means uh, when 9th lord uh, 10th lord goes into 12th house with a foreign planet and then venus is there in 10th house venus is venus we know it's a planet of pleasure entertainment venus is also your luxury and venus is also your marketing advertising so all that we can see clearly in the stadium in the in each and every match which is played so a lot of glamour is there a lot of uh, media coverage is there a lot of fanfare a lot of luxury a lot of celebration jubilation uh, entertainment everything is there in the matches right so then uh we have six house we have saturn and ketu against saturn and ketu both are malefic planets sitting in the six house some people say six house malefic planets are good a um, lot of people say only mars is to be taken as good in six house other planets will definitely give some trouble six house is house of uh, enemies fights uh, unnecessary uh, untimely things untimely events and all all that kind of thing so uh, two malefics in sixth house uh, not so good not so great uh, thing to have in the chart but this is what it is some good points some bad points and that's that's how each and everything is so while we talk about uh, this tournament so what is the most important house is ascendant and uh, trine houses but uh, in terms of quadrant houses 10th house is considered as to be most important quadrant house right now here in the 10th house what we see is planet venus which is fourth lord which is a natural benefic uh, benefic planet but it is not so benefic because uh, its own ownership of fourth house but the 10th lord has gone into 12th house 12th house of losses so again there will be a lot of humility 12th house is also house of humility so there will be a lot of humility so when there is a gain of a status or when the, 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 even if people have lot of power they will use their power power with lot of humility so that's what it means so there is no there is no uh, show off there is no abuse of power uh, those kind of things will not be there uh, people will act in a with humility with respect is what we see here now uh, in terms of uh, the different matches being played uh, one of the way to analyze the different matches which are being played in this tournament is so you can take one match for each house uh, each each day of the tournament can be taken as one house and then you can count number of signs and then you can basically see what is going to happen in each day of the tournament so again for example uh, 
we see the if you see this is this is a wikipedia page for this tournament first match is there in the on the 30th of may so if we see on 30 30th of may first match was played 31st second first june third is the third day of the tournament second june is fourth third june is fifth and sixth june is no fourth june is sixth day of the tournament so sixth day of the tournament is indicated by the sixth house sixth house we have saturn and ketu not so good planets two malefics natural malefic planets and saturn is a pure pure play malefic here because saturn is also lord of seventh and eighth house sitting in the sixth house so saturn means trouble and we all know that for cancer ascendant saturn is uh, it's a it's a pure malefic planet so sixth day of the tournament we have saturn and ketu so saturn and ketu will definitely create troubles for that particular day on that particular day and what we see here is the sixth match sixth day of the tournament the match which was placed was washed out by the rain so there was a rain and the outcome of the match was decided by the dls method in the same way if you see the eighth day of the tournament so fourth is sixth day seventh and eighth and the ninth day of the tournament is 7th of june 7th of june also you the match was abandoned because of rain ninth day of the tournament is the ninth house ninth house we have moon moon is a watery planet and watery sign and the lord of ninth house has gone into fifth house and it is aspecting the ninth house so again watery planet watery sign and the planets are also aspecting each other so again all that created rains in the tournament now in terms of the final outcome of the 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 series again we have to see what is called as compressed vimshotri dasha so if you use the mundane section of jagannath pura and then calculate the chart for 50 days and then you see the vimshotri dasha You will get the 50 day Vimshotri Dasha, compressed Vimshotri Dasha. Now, what you see here is uh, the first Dasha was there of Mercury. Mercury is 12th Lord and the third Lord. So, Mercury is not a benefic planet for Cancer ascendant. So, it was a okay period. Then Ketu period was there. Now, what I wanted to highlight is the last Dasha is going to be of Saturn for this tournament. the final match will be played on 7 14th july of 14th of july is when the final match of the tournament is played now if if my analysis is right if if the way i have erected the chart is right and if i have i mean i'm i'm sure i'm used all the correct calculation but what it means is if the final dasha is going to be of saturn and we know saturn is a malefic planet for cancer ascendant it is sitting in the 6th house also so what it means is the final outcome of the tournament will not be to everyone's liking there will be something or other which will happen towards the end of the tournament between 6th of july and 14th of july which will be not liked by most of the people the people who will go to watch matches the people who are watching the matches they will feel disheartened by something which will happen between these states now what what it can be it can be because of rain or it can be some other factors you know 6th house is untimely things and 8th house is house of house which is full of surprises there can be nasty surprises because here saturn is aspected by mars and then rahu ketu are also involved so rahu ketu by themselves they indicate lot of sudden and untimely unexpected things 
Rahu can surprise you like anything. And Rahu is also Lord of Eighth House, co-Lord of Eighth House. It is there in the twelfth house with the tenth Lord, aspecting Saturn, the eighth Lord. Eighth Lord is aspecting eighth house, and with all this drama, with all the four functional valefic planets involved in this combination, I have a fair feeling that the end result of this tournament may not be to everyone's liking. Sorry to say that I hope everything goes well for the tournament, but I, I using the pure play astrology mind, if you see, there is something which may happen which is not appreciated by everyone. So that's how I will say this is what is going to happen for this particular tournament. Uh, may the best team win. Be it a fair contest for everyone, for all the teams which are playing, may everyone get a fair opportunity and I wish all the best to all the organizers and all the participants for this tournament. Thank you. Thank you for watching this. Hey, click on the subscribe button, especially the bell on the right side, otherwise you will miss the latest videos.